today's going to be exciting. It's Wednesday, April 24th, 2019, and our new sheet lines and halyards are arriving to be installed. Our rigging expert is here, and our lines are here. So today, we're going to really learn about the running rigging on our 50-foot Gulf Star motor yacht. I wish I knew more about the parts of this boat and the sailing of the boat and uh, sailing in general. Uh, there are a lot of different parts and so many different names to all the different parts and for good reason because they all have specific purposes. Well come on over and let's learn about the parts of the boat. Okay so let's start with this very basic diagram of the parts of a sailboat. So, the first thing, starting at the bottom, is the keel. The keel does two things. One, it stops the boat from going sideways. And two, its weight holds the boat up, straight up and down. Now, do you know what part steers the boat, honey? The jib? No. The mainsail? It's under the water. Oh. The rudder? The rudder. Exactly. The rudder steers the boat. Now, the kind of rudder that we have on our boat has a rudder stem, which is a metal rod that comes up from the rudder and through the boat into the steering gear which we were looking at earlier. So now let's look at the mast. On the mast in this diagram there's two sails. What are the two sails honey? The head sail and the main sail. What else do we call the head sail? The jib. Right. We call now another part of the boat that everybody needs to know is the boom. You know why they call it the boom? Because it comes crashing down? Well it'll come crashing into your head if you're not watching out when it comes swinging across the boat. That's why they call it the boom. And another thing that we might need to pay attention to from time to time is this backstay. Now do you see what the backstay does? Not really. It holds the mast up from the back. It's hard to tell from this diagram. Okay, well you have a back stay that holds the back of the mast and you have a head stay that holds the front. Okay. There's also stays that go on the side, but we don't see them here. So let's try to find a picture that shows some more parts. Now we have a diagram with some more parts. So, what are the parts there where you see there's three of them that hold the mast from going sideways? They hold the mast up in the air. Okay, so you can see in the diagram there's three arrows pointing to the shrouds. Now, what do the shrouds do, honey? I don't know. Okay, so you see the three hours, arrows for the three shrouds on this boat. Now, you know what the shrouds do, right, honey? They hold up the mast. That's right. They hold the mast up. The mast needs to be held in the front and the back and also on the sides. Now, you know where the bow is? Yes. Point to it on the diagram. There you go. And what's in front of the bow? The pulpit. That's right. The bow pulpit. And we have a beautiful bow pulpit that we're going to go up and take a look at. And what else is there on here right now that we need to know? I'm going to spare you the parts of the sail. Because that could get a little confusing. Now. There's the boom vang. 
Do you know which part here is the boom vang? It's not quite clearly showing it in the diagram. Guess which part is the boom vang? Oh, uh, well, it's got to be connected to the boom. Mm -hmm. So, I'm thinking... Is it this line here? I don't know. Right. It's the line that goes diagonally from the boom down towards the base of the mast. And do you know what the boom vang does? I don't remember. It holds the boom down. So when the wind fills the sail, the end of the boom doesn't lift up into the air. Now let's take a quick look at the parts of the jib. Now where do you attach the halyard? to raise the jib. So let's just take a quick look at the three main parts of the jib. The first is the head of the jib. Now do you know what we attach to the head of the jib? The halyard? The jib halyard, that's right. And down here is the clue of the jib. Now do you know what we attach to the clue of the jib? The tack? Okay, now we're just going to take a quick look at the main parts of the jib. Now, what do we attach to the head of the jib? The halyard. The halyard, that's right. It goes up to the top of the mast and down through the mast to the winch, which we'll take a look at. Now, the clue of the jib is the back of the jib. Now, what do we attach to the clue of the jib? The jib sheet. The jib sheet, that's right. And the jib sheet will go back towards our track where there'll be a car with a pulley, and then it will run through the winch. First thing we're working on today are the halyards that go on the main mast. So, the halyards we know are the lines that raise the sails. Uh, on the main mast here, we have four halyards, and we also have a top and lift. We're going to show you what each one So today we have our rigging expert, John McCausland from Morehouse McCausland Sailmakers here to help us put the lines on. So what are you tying there again right now, John? We're making a loop to tie the messenger line to take the old halyard off the mast and pull the new halyard back through so we don't have to go up the mast. So let's explain that. There are two spinnaker halyards on this boat. They're both external halyards. You can see the pulley at the top of the mast. That's called the shift. Then the spinnaker lines, the halyard lines, come all the way down to here. And there it goes up the mast. So, obviously the trick here is to make sure that you don't lose the line. Otherwise, somebody has to go up there. Here's the new port spinnaker halyard with the snap shackle that we, he was able to save off of the old halyard. And you can see how it's been spliced on. So now we have the port and starboard spinnaker halyards up, and now we're changing the topping lift. 
This is the topping lift. It holds the spinnaker pole up in the air. The spinnaker pole is on top of our houseboat right now, but the spinnaker pole will go back into the chocks on the deck. There's two chocks and the two brackets that we looked at yesterday that secure the spinnaker pole to the deck. The end of the pole fits into one of the two goosenecks above the boom. Here is our new jib halyard. And here is our new main halyard. So what were you telling me about the halyard again? We're going to measure the halyard, and this isn't quite like a small one design racing sailboat. If we're within an inch or a half an inch, we're good to go since there's a, there's a winch that it goes around, so we just got to get close. We're going to use the snap shackle from the existing halyard, which is in good shape and should be good. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah, so. All right. <coughs> That's the mark that should be at the top of the loop. Now we're going to use this tool, which is called a Nyko press tool, and we're going to squeeze this Nyko press sleeve on the wire to make the loop. Each time you squeeze the Nyko press, you should rotate the wire 180 degrees, which keeps this sleeve from getting a banana shape. Keeps the sleeve straight. Here's your finished product. When you start to do a Nyko press, before you squeeze it, you want to leave oh, approximately 3 16 of an inch stick out because as you squeeze the sleeve, the sleeve grows and hides the wire. how we make a new chip higher. Now it's time to put it up. So now, what do, what do we call that string again? The fishing line there? Uh, messenger line. Messenger line. Right, so now you're putting the messenger line onto the new chip higher.
And now he's making a new main hire. And here we go again, laying out the two halyards next to each other, the old one and the new one, to make sure that we match the length. And like John said, it's not an exact science if it's off by a, an inch or half an inch. That can just be made up when we tighten up on the winch. The end of the wire doesn't have to fit into a lock. So how do you splice the rope onto the end of the cable, John? Um, I actually had a, a company that I do a lot of work with did this type of wire to rope splice for us. I can do wire to rope splices on smaller wire, but this bigger stuff, I thought it was important that it get done really nicely. And is there a special tool they use for that? There's uh, there's fids that you use to feed the wire into the rope because the wire goes buries into the rope about where my right hand is. And then there's fids that open the wire that you can weave the line through. So don't try this at home. No, it, that, that's something left to the experts. On this big a boat and this much pressure. So there you see it. The old main halyard next to the new main halyard. Here. I can feel the wire about here. This one has a little more wire actually, but uh, I think we're going to be good. Now, while I hold the splices together, he's going to go down to the end and mark the line. Mark the cable so that the new cable is the same length as the top of the loop of the old cable. So he has to mark it at the top of the loop. Then he's going to pull it around through the thimble like we just saw with the necropress but to make sure that the tops of the thimbles match and not, not the length of the cable. We cut the excess cable off. We'll watch again. So now he's cutting off the old thimble and shackle. Here we go. And there's the mark where it's going to be the top of the loop. Now, it's actually a lot harder than it looks because he knows how to do it. I've done it with small cables, but it's uh, it's hard to get that thing in the right spot. Running the cable through the shackle. Sliding the fitting on. You don't want to forget and accidentally leave that shackle off, otherwise it's... Not too good. just thinking that I can't get the loop quite tight enough so I'm just gonna do it by my hand I can't get it quite tight enough so I'm just thinking I need to cut a little bit more off than what I could to make the loop tight once it's squeezed together running the cable through the shackle Accidentally leave that shackle off, otherwise it's not too good. Gets it in there at the right 
spot where it's going to uh, line the mark up at the top. And that mark is where the bottom of the Niper Press goes. What's the extra line there you're going to... Well, I'm just thinking that I can't get the loop quite tight enough, so I'm just going to do it by my hand. I can't get it quite tight enough, so I'm just thinking I need to cut a little bit more off than what I could to make the loop tight once it's squeezed together. Cut the right end of the wire off. Yes, it is. Ah, see, we love the new lines. So, you notice on the left side of the screen. That is the winch for the main hire, the white line with the red specs. On the right side of the screen, you see the white line with the blue specs. That's the hire for the chip. And then in front, we have the green with white and the white with green, which are the starboard and the port spinnaker hires. And also you see the white line is the topping lift, which we look up and notice doesn't go all the way to the top of the mast. Because again, that's just to hold the pole up. So now, we have a mast with some beautiful new running rigging. And we have two more pieces to go on. The bang and the main sheet. from the old boom bang and John already has it set up the tang that the bang hooks onto is unfortunately broken but we're going to get a new one and replace that for everyone that doesn't know the boom bang holds the boom down so when the sail feels the wind on it, the boom doesn't lift up in the air. John, is there a bang for the mizzen mast, or we, we uh, just have a main? There is not. There is not. So our shorter mizzen mast and boom doesn't have a bang. I think when we see the mizzen sheet go on, we'll see that it holds the boom down itself. He's putting on the new main sheet. Looks like there's a pin on the end of the block and the loop on the line goes through the pin. With the ring ding to hold it in place. John, you think that white cable that attaches to the end of the boom, is that for anything more than holding the boom up? No, the white cable in front of it. The white? No, oh, to your right. This? Yeah. I think they would call that a topping lift. A topping lift for the boom. Yes. And how about those cables that are hooked on to the end of the boom? Do we know what they are? So I don't know what they yes, are. Yes, I'm not sure. I think it might have something to do with the mizzen stay sail or the tri sail maybe. We'll figure that out.
John, why don't you tell us about the comet that I gave you? What was special about that boat in particular? Well, Bob, Bob was very generous and uh, gave me a comet that I was looking for, and that boat was a international champion boat in, I think, 1987, 88, somewhere in those range. And it was it's structurally in really nice shape. And I've been doing a little refinishing work back at the shop on it, and I will share a uh, I will share some pictures with Bob, and he can share with you. But wait, but what's so special about that particular boat? That particular boat was owned by a fellow named Kirk Gutwine, who won the international championship in it, and it's actually. got a different double bottom in it than most comets. Yeah, but, but, but John, who built the boat? Uh, the boat was built by Dave Oberg. And, and you, right? And I was involved in <laughs> building it way back when. And I worked for Dave. So it was um, kind of special to have something I had my hand in building back. And Bob was kind enough to make a little deal here with us. And I'm working on his boat. And was able to, uh, we were able to do a little barter to make this all happen. So I gave him the boat that he built, and now he's giving us new lines. Spirit of giving. Okay, now, so this red and white one is the halyard for the mizzen stay sail. It may also be for the tri sail. We'll have to figure that out. Since I'm sure most people don't even know what a mizzen stay sail is, I'm going to take a picture of it. It's like a little spinnaker and it goes up at the top of the mizzen mast. You really never see them. But it is something that you would need off the wind and light air if you want to get the boat accelerated to hull speed. the messenger line again? Yes. So this is our sun damaged roller furler jib. This is the trailing edge of it. You can see it was rolled backwards. This side has UV protection. This side doesn't have it. And it really doesn't look like this side has UV protection either. We're gonna see if we can fix it. Okay. For sure. So this side's good. And it goes down. This is positively the UV. So the question just is can we stitch a patch over here and oh, it, sure it's going to hold? Yeah. Alright, well, that'll be our next exciting episode. Alright, thank you, John. We'll All see right, you we'll, the next time. We'll be back to finish the project. Or maybe we'll come visit you at your shop. There you go. Thank you. Thank you.